on you guys this is Tim Odell with Odell Complete Concrete and today we're gonna to be doing a concrete patio replacement we're gonna be taking out this old brick patio the brick patio was really messed up there was a lot of problems with it it was sloping wrong it was uh, two inches above the weep screen so all the water hitting the house none of it was pretty much draining out it was just rotting that wood away and then um, also because the patio was put in wrong everything that came after that was messed up as well pretty much the lawn the post the uh, sliding glass doors on the house so the posts are set too high so eventually in this video you're gonna see that we replace those well actually the homeowner replaced them himself but um those are gonna have to be replaced because of the problems with the pat the existing patio and this patio came out pretty easily I mean there wasn't much concrete underneath it was like two to three inches overall but it would in some areas you'd get like a good like one inch of concrete and then the brick wasn't even um, adhered to it very well it wasn't much adhesive so once we started out I mean I didn't even need a jackhammer for this job all I did was get a prime bar and sludge and I pretty much was prying the whole patio up with the pry bar and then I just break it up into small chunks so I can get it into the trailer something else that kind of like boggled my mind for this job was the forms against the house I don't know why the person who poured this patio put forms against the house when putting the concrete base in for the bricks but they did I mean, I don't know if it's that if that was supposed to be like kind of like an expansion type of joint or what that was exactly, but I mean, if you guys know why they did that, comment down below cuz I don't know why they would put forms up against a house when you can pour right up against the house, you know, the the house foundation. So if you guys like know what was going on there, let me know cuz I was confused about that, but we took those out, took them to the dump, trashed them. And so, and also for this job, um, we're going to be extending this patio about 15, uh, probably about 12 feet in both directions, making this whole patio uh, about 45 feet in total. We're going all the way towards those uh, uh, old railroad tie retaining wall, you can see in the background so that the homeowner would have plenty of space for this patio to set anything he really wants on it. I know his kid plays basketball, so he'll be able to set a nice little basketball hoop up on here. Well, more likely on uh, the outside edges where the patio cover isn't on. So all in all, demolition for the concrete and brick went pretty smoothly. No problems really. The hard part was when we got to the dirt. The top layer of the dirt was not a problem. But once you got a little deeper, we started to get into this really strong clay dirt that made the job just drag and, man, killed me. Alright, so I thought this was going to be a cool shot for you guys to see. So I strapped the GoPro to the back of the trailer. I actually just bought this trailer, just like my dad. He, We have the same trailer, just so we can get jobs done quicker and hopefully get more videos up uh, for you guys to watch. And the only thing that's not like super cool about this trailer is that it doesn't lift more than I think it's about three to four tons. I mean, any more than that, you have to start getting in there and start throwing out the the stuff in the front, like the concrete or dirt or whatever it is that I uh, put in the front. I gotta hand throw it out until uh, the trailer can start lifting itself. But all in all, I like it. It's a good trailer so far. I've only had it for like a month so far. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. All right, what's going on you guys? This is Tim with Odell Complete Concrete. And what we're doing right now is we're trying to fix a grading problem that was here uh, before. What was here before was a brick patio, which you guys saw earlier in the video. And it was up to about this level, like roughly about here about an inch or two above the weep screen, which is like about here. And typically on a concrete pour or patio, you want to be about a half inch below that weep screen so that the water could drain out from the stucco. So what we're having to do is dig out a lot more dirt than anticipated. But, you know, 
that kind of stuff comes with the experience once you keep doing these type of jobs. And um, as you can see, if you point the camera this way, that all that dirt is really high compared to what where we're digging. So what we're gonna be doing right now is just we're gonna keep going down this, trying to get a good three inch, 2% uh, slope from the house to this lawn. The lawn's gonna be an issue that we're gonna have to fix later on and the homeowner is aware of this and knows this. So we're gonna keep going down this area, keep taking this dirt down and get a nice 2% slope from the house to the lawn. Here's a closer shot of the weep screen and what we were dealing with and how bad it really was. Pretty much the guy that poured the concrete here before like cemented all the weep screen shut so that no water could drain out. So we're just smashing it out with the hammer to uh, clear the area so we can pour there. As you can see me smashing it out, clearing the debris so that the weep screen would be exposed and we won't have any drainage issues. All right, so I've just set up the Dewalt laser level and I'm putting stakes in from the house to the end of the concrete, which is 13 and a half feet off the house. And I'm doing a half inch under the weep screen and then a three inch drop in 13 and a half feet. And there's a mathematical equation for fi uh, figuring out your slope percentages. I believe um, it's an eighth inch for every foot for 1% and then a quarter inch for every foot for 2%. And uh, if you want to get really technical, I believe um, you do rise divided by run times 100. And that will give you your sloping percentage. So you guys can literally do the math for this job, it, which would be um, 3 inches divided by 13.5, but you got to convert that 3 inches into feet, which would be uh, 0.25 divided by 13.5, and then you times that by 100, and you'll get just about 2%, pretty close. I think it's like 1.85, which is better though, because... It's a patio, you don't want too much slope. Now what I've done here is you can see that string line at the very back side of those uh, posts, that's going to be my form board. And what we're doing is we're going back and just clearing that section out about four inches under that uh, string line so that we can get our form in and we can start grading all the dirt in the middle area where the patio is going to be down to about three and a half to four inches so that we get a nice even pour across this uh, backyard patio. But uh, yeah, you always wanna get your forms in so you know the grade of where you need to be overall instead of just trying to eyeball everything, which is kinda what we were doing for most of the part because we already kinda knew that everything in the middle was high. So we kinda just started going at it because I mean, when you have like you know a good amount of experience doing this kind of stuff you kind of develop an eye for grade and slope and all that good stuff I mean some people say you either have the eye for it or you don't but I don't know what do you guys think is it something you develop over time or you just naturally have that type of uh, eye plus we did have our Dewalt laser level out so we can keep checking on the grade areas making sure we're uh, sloping properly and getting a nice even spread of this uh, base or the dirt So once we got our string lines established we noticed uh, we had to start going down even deeper and This is when we started getting into this really strong clay Which was not fun to dig out Plus it cost it a lot to dump because this stuff was really heavy. I did try to take one load to Brea, but there was just so many roots in this dirt. I mean, I tried taking out as much as I could, but they're kind of picky over there. And yeah, I got charged. So it definitely was a waste of time. Because I was uh, doing this job in Mission Viejo and going to Brea, it's like a good hour and a half drive just to get there and then an hour and a half drive back 
but we are starting an, a, a new job guys it's gonna be a big pour a um, couple of uh, driveway jobs and patios coming up so stay tuned for those videos and if you guys want to know what's going on in our day-to-day -day works life, um, just follow us on Instagram. Uh, I'm posting on there daily. Sam posts is on there. So if you guys are interested, you guys can always check that out. So you can see how high that lawn is compared to the patio we're going to be putting in. And I believe it was that way because... The homeowner when he bought this place the patio was already there and uh, the real estate agent or the people who were selling the home to him they put um, all new grass and dirt back there and topsoil and all that kind of stuff and raised it up to the existing patio level to make the backyard look really nice so preparation is always key for making sure a pour goes just to plan you want to always over prep and double check everything so you can see we keep going back with the dewalt laser level checking all the grades making sure that we're uh, getting enough um, dirt taken out so we can get a nice thick concrete pour and then you can see on this post how high up they are compared to the concrete patio we're gonna to have to be putting in but the funny thing is the AC unit is actually at a, a good level. It's pretty much level with the weep screen. And even over by that wall, the people who put the block wall in, the foundation is literally as high as the weep screen on this house. Like the, the concrete patio that I'm putting in goes actually lower than the foundation of that concrete block wall. So I had to form a little curb to cover up that foundation. Luckily, I didn't have to chip any of that foundation down, but it was it was close. I almost had to. But you guys will see that um, on the poor day, which is going to be uh, part two to this video. So I'm finally putting in that form so we can make sure that we're getting a good um, slope to that uh, from the house and also to make sure that the grade is three to four inches overall. You can see we have our first string line set right there. And then what was weird was there was a random dog just showing up, like kept coming in this backyard and the homeowner doesn't even have a dog. But the dog was just kicking it and chilling with us. And then that's the, the little uh, walls talking about guys right there. You can see the red chalk I had snapped against it. That's like how much it was barely above that foundation. And that's the red chalk is level with the weep screen. Actually, well, it's a half inch down from the weep screen. And you can see I'm getting ready to put that form in right now. And then once we have our grade set, we're going to be going over everything with our, our plate compactor, compacting the space, even though it was so hard, it barely even needed to be compacted. I mean, this clay was. It was not fun to dig. And now we're putting in a 3 8 rebar for this patio. And we totally did uh, an overkill on this patio. We put, I think, all the rebar on one foot centers because um, I actually don't have a rack yet for my truck. And we got too much rebar. So we just, we can't really take it back with us. So we just threw it all in. Better for the patio anyways. So if you look at those patio cover posts, the concrete foundations on them are pretty high compared to where our concrete patio edge is gonna be over by the forms. So I recommended to the homeowner that he just replace them or I replace them, but he decided to replace them himself, made the right choice, 
got them done in actually one night for us so that we could stay on track with the job and get this job all poured out on schedule. And I'm just checking all the levels with the DeWalt laser level, making sure everything is leveled half inch under that weep screen and then three inches for the form on the very far outside. And then you can also see that the homeowner replaced the uh, patio cover post. And I actually think the patio cover post look way better now, way more clean. And Sam is just going down, tying all the rebar while I set the form for the AC unit. Going around all the irrigation, water ho water bib, uh, irrigation valves. But that about wraps this video up, guys. Uh, I'm going to start getting to work on that second part for you guys. And should be up shortly. So stay tuned for part two. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps us out and keeps us pushing forward and putting out uh, new videos for you guys and um, thank you guys very much have a great one